What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Critical Overlord here. So we're going to talk about multiple topics in this video here again today. We'll be talking about a little bit of Scream 6 and Scream 7, I guess. And then moving on into Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey. And we'll be discussing Bring It On, Cheer or Die. And then Hellraiser, which we know is coming to Hulu later next month. Or later this year, next month, very early October. So just to jump into it, Heather Matarazzo had a recent interview where she has reiterated that she would not be returning for Scream 6. And now the way she did it did seem to suggest that perhaps she has been filled in on plans to do a Scream 7 that might again include her. Because she didn't flat out say she would be in Scream 7. And no, her talking about Scream 7 doesn't mean that Scream 7 is going to happen. But the way she's going off gave a lot of people, myself included, the assumption or the vibe that, you know, they have a trilogy plan like we've already thought about. And at least when they went to you to tell you, hey, you're not going to be in Scream 6, but we want to or we have intent at this present time to bring you back in some capacity for Scream 7. So the role she has in 7 might be tied to whatever may or may not happen to her kids, Chad and Mindy, in Scream 6. We know that Heather, again, is Randy Meek's sister, who we first met in Scream 3. So I'd love to see Heather in a much bigger supporting role for 7 if a 7th movie happens. Only because, you know, from meeting her in 3, seeing her deliver that videotape of Randy who recorded a video prior to his death because he anticipated the return of another girl's face, talking about the rules of a trilogy. Now, learning that she has grown up, had some kids, and now she may or may not potentially lose one, if not maybe both of them in Scream 6. Going into Scream 7, you're, you're going to have a lot of material, I would say, out of those two appearances to now finally give her a much more prominent role in Scream 7. So I hope we see something play out there with her being in a more dominant role in Scream 7 and I'll actually have a separate video talking about this whole topic separately about my hopes for Scream 7 and her character and what she had to say in this interview once again so just to jump into bring it on cheer or die which is supposed to debut on sci-fi later this fall I believe now if you find yourself confused don't be or I guess maybe you still can but yes the Kirsten Dunst Gabrielle Union film that many of you probably grew up on like myself that spawned a series of movies that you may or may not be a fan of. I know I'm a fan of the series. It's received the slasher treatment and I believe this movie was supposed to come out sometime last year but it just never happened. Now it's coming out this year. So of course since it's going to sci-fi I won't expect anything on par with the OG movie at all but I am intrigued by the slasher treatment. I do think that there might be a startup of something where you start to see things that didn't start off as slashers being turned into slashers which is again very ironic considering i'm going to talk about winnie the pooh next in this video uh or down the road in this video so with the movie going to sci-fi again this bring it on movie we got our first couple of images that you see here coming up on your screen i'm not expecting anything great by any means because the series in itself had already been doing the straight to tv dvd stuff for a minute anyway and hayden pantier we know starred in one of them along with beyonce's sister uh and another girl i forgot her name but she was in an episode or a couple of episodes actually from the sweet life of zach and cody because she played mr mosby's niece uh they've been doing the straight to dvd stuff for a while so the only difference now here is that they're keeping it fresh by turning it into a slasher the film is written by rebecca mckendry and dana schwartz who worked on she hulk i believe and the story is from allison fold Foze, who or foes who already has a history with bring it on because her name looked familiar i think she worked on one of the other movies it's about a cheer squad's plan to have a secret practice at a nearby abandoned school on halloween when it takes a terrifying turn when their teammates begin disappearing one by one so of course we'll see how this all plays out when it releases on the sci-fi network later this year in the fall season now we need to jump into talking about hellraiser so we finally have a first look at Jamie Clayton as Hellraiser, as you see here on your screen, and a new Cenobite image that's going to come up. This Cenobite is named The Mask, and I'm really impressed and intrigued to see how this plays out when it releases on Hulu next month. I'm digging the look so far, and I think Doug Brad Bradley actually gave an approval statement to Jamie at an event recently, so much respect to him for that. Doug is meaning you know starred as Pinhead in that original movie and the sequels, and he has also admitted to being a fan of another project Jamie has worked on, and he he admitted also when it relates to this movie that I wish so many other 
other people would focus on. The thing that will make the movie work or not is none of that. And I'm assuming when he says none of that, he's talking about the casting decisions. It's the story. If the story is strong, the movie will work. And again, that is the truth. And it also comes down to how it's executed. Really doesn't matter who's in the role when it relates to Pinhead, at least not from my memory. I don't recall Pinhead ever being established as a male as much as I recall somebody making a movie and deciding to put a male actor in the role of Pinhead, which is fine just like how they're deciding to put a woman in the role of Pinhead right now. So we'll see how this movie plays out, and I'm glad he doesn't see a problem with Pinhead being a woman, since Pinhead, again, to my knowledge, was never assigned a gender to begin with. Just to talk about this Winnie the, Pooh, Winnie the Pooh Blood and Honey trailer, I saw it, it looks deranged, it looks sinister, I'm still on the fence about this, I am intrigued and I am going to watch it, uh, of course it doesn't look all that great, it looks like trashy camp fun that I probably won't want to revisit. I'm mostly intrigued by the fact that, again, something from your childhood has been turned on its head into this sick, twisted thing. And I'm guessing it probably wasn't a good idea for Christopher Robin to go off to college like the way he did, leaving Piglet and Winnie to just become these feral, uh, unhinged creatures. Because I think they've killed Eeyore and others as well and they're just becoming these cannibals. Now with him returning to the forest with his new wife, Christopher Robin, that being, hoping to introduce her to his old friends, that's a little strange in and of itself. <laughs> Taking your wife here. Uh, feeling betrayed, this results in them going on a murderous rampage for human flesh as they <laughs> antagonize a group of university girls who are occupying a rural cabin. Again, I watched the trailer. It looks like trashy fun. I'm gonna check it out when it comes out later this year, as, as I'm sure most of you will as well. Let me know what y'all think about all these down in the comment section below. If you haven't already, of course, make sure you subscribe subscribe turn on post notification and there's a video in the description i'll have links on my social media accounts on facebook twitter and instagram you can message me there of course to let me know any movies news or reviews you'd like me to cover in the future and with all that in mind guys i will see you in the next video